Hey everybody, Brandon Beliso here. It is Friday. We got a little bit of a late start there, but that's okay. Uh, it is Friday, 11.05 Pacific Standard Time here on the West Coast. This is Success Never Sleeps. I'm your host, Brandon Beliso. We are presented by who? My studio, the app. Tune the gang out there. I love them. It's simply the best in a CRM app-based system. If you don't have it, you should get it. Market Muscles, Stephen Reinstein and the gang. I love their websites. I love the innovation that goes in, but most of all, they care. Kids love life skills. Life skills is the foundation of any great martial arts business, and Kids Love Life Skills is the go-to for that. And of course, LC Accounting. Uh, looking for a bookkeeper, you need LC Accounting. So things are crazy out there, right? Some schools are opening up. Some schools are opening up and they're not supposed to. Um, these are strange times that we're living in and everybody's pivoting hard, trying to find a way to make this all happen. So we're going to bring on somebody really, really cool in just a minute. And, and you know, everyone's been looking forward to this. I can't believe all the um, buzz that's gone around having men on the show. A lot of people don't know who she is. And and I know her as two sister, and I'm going to let her introduce herself when she gets here. So you guys know the drill. It's real simple. All you got to do is share this live broadcast with as many people as you can. And K1, what are we giving away today? What are we giving away today? I see on the bottom, this episode is sponsored by my studio app. That's, that's cool. That's cool. One for Live. So what are we giving away today, K1? And as you come aboard, say hello. We love to see the different people coming in from Australia and Canada, Germany, the UK, and of course, the United States. What's happening, Don O'Neill? Uh, just type it in there. Tell us where you're coming in from. Make sure that you share this, K1. Who, what, and what, and how, and why are we giving away today? What you got for me, K1? I think he's like three seconds behind me in a delay. So... We just got word. K1, today we we're giving away a one hour, one hour of consultation with me. Right? That's been really helping a lot of school owners. I can gratefully say all of my clients are still open, still surviving, still thriving in this new norm because we've had conversations, we've pivoted hard together to create the climate that we're experiencing today. We just got word that we won't even be able to open our school until August. August 15th, as we're being classified as a gym, I've taken it up with our local government and they shot me down. They said, take it to the state and we'll see how far we get with that. But as of today, we're still being classified as a gym. That means we can't open until mid August. So some of the variables we're looking at, the alternatives are one, holding classes in the park. I mean, we're gonna be allowed that. The challenge is this is going to be one of the hottest summers on record. So how does that look? Maybe we do virtual classes during the week right? And then do a black belt workshop on a Saturday in the park and do smaller groups. So I think that sense of community, one of the big things I've gathered in data, reading Forbes, reading, you know, Fortune 500 magazines, one of the things the data is showing us is that the consumer is moving from a me position into more of a we position. I know the whole country seems divided with the face mask issue and all of that, but at a heart level, at a majority level, I think I posted that from the very beginning, together we can. That's been my meme, it's been up on everything that I do. And I think there is a deeper sense with the majority that we are in this together. So the community seems to be moving more to community-based buying. So if you're aligning yourself and doing an event and donating the money to the first responders and different things like that, I think that's powerful as far as brand marketing. One day I was out, I volunteered with the Lions Club and I was out giving away free masks. So different things like that, that type of visibility in the community, I think is going to endear you to the new consumer. And I'm going to say the new consumer because things are shifting dramatically in that respect. So do keep an eye on that. And then the second thing, of course, you know, we're talking about summer camps, virtual, live, section three hours here all day. So I'm going to bring probably who I think is the expert on camps. Um, above everybody. Because when I first met her brother over a decade ago, her brother too, who is one of the, the CEO and co-founder of my studio, um, they were running, well, they still do. The majority of their income predominantly at the time was 75% was martial law, was after school and camps. And I was just blown away by that. Where for me, it was the flip side. I was making 75% of my revenue with traditional martial arts classes. So we each had something to bring to the table to share and, 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 and work from. And I was just amazed at what they do. And little did I know that behind Top Kick and John Cassidy and two, there was this little bubbly woman out there who I just knew as men. 
And what I love about men more than anything is she's a straight shooter. What you see is what you get. The men I first met, the men I saw in Vegas, the men that I, I, I'm always, she's very consistent, but what she is more than that is she's smart and she's creative and she's been able to take something and I'm not 10 exit, I would say a hundred times exit. They do themes, you know, their, their greeting process. When people get off the bus in the after school, I watched her walk out to the front door was one of the first things in her uniform and greet every kid who got off that bus. You know, it just amazes me the detail that that is, I don't know if it's more innate and it's just something real. And I can only imagine now her being a mom with three kids, how much more in tune she is with the demographic of children, but not only children, we understand the buying power comes from the parent, comes from the parent. And they're very positive and engaged and, and they feel it too. You know, we've had some conversations off camera and I've spoken to two, we're all feeling this. So make no mistake. But I think the difference is we have faith, we're positive and we're data driven. So with that, I want to bring her aboard. If I can get her in here. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, wow. What's happening, man? Hi, Brandon. That was a very nice introduction. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I always think, Brandon, you're my brother from I another know. mother, right? We've known know. each other. I, I know. I know, ma'am. And, and I love you. So the first thing I want to talk about is Miss Thing. I got to tell you, I saw the video yesterday and, and the first part, when you were coming around the corner and she didn't see you at first, she was stewing. She was pissed. She's like, what is this? And then when she saw you, she worked it. I yeah. saw the tears. She turned on those tears. I went, oh man, you got your hands full. Yes. Uh, Miss Thang is my one-year-old daughter yeah. at home, and she is definitely entering the terrible twos. A little background on me. When I met Brandon, I was, gosh, I was probably 19, 19 or 20 years old, I think. A, uh, decade, a decade ago. Yeah. A decade ago. No, no kids, not married. Uh, just been working with kids for forever in the martial arts field. And now I'm a mom of three. I have three beautiful kids, uh, four years old, two years old, and one year old. So it is a busy, busy time. And beyond that, I've been working with uh, John Casty, which many of you guys know. He's the president of Top Kick Martial Arts. He was my first instructor. So I got to learn from one of the best. Beyond that, two is my brother, and we partner in our Encourage locations together. We have five Encourage locations. Uh, my husband and I also own a Top Kick location. So we specialize in martial arts, summer camp, after school. We are feeling everything you guys are feeling uh, right now. Everything, every business all over the world is feeling. And I'm so happy to be able to jump on to kind of talk with Brandon. He's always so knowledgeable. Brandon, you've been such a huge mentor for me, for two, for Kevin, our whole organization. So thank you for having me on today. Thank you. You know, it was a real gift when two and I first met in that bar and I was drinking green tea. He was subbing for John because Deb was sick and two walked in and he saw me drinking green tea and we just connected, you know, and, and it's been a love affair ever since. I tell people all the time when I travel, I only stay in hotels, but yeah. when I'm in your neck of the woods, I stay at two's house. I mean, okay. that, that's how close we are, but, but it's mutual. I learned so much from you guys and you guys, you know, John Cassidy was one of the first uh, to really get me to pivot into systems and e-myth and that whole mindset. And I moved from being a personality driven business to a systems driven business. And then eventually when Rudy Mick came into the picture, a purpose and why driven business. So that's been super powerful. So I want to start with one thing before we hop into camps. You know, you've managed to get 65% of your after school people to pay you full price through this thing for the past two months. Just give me three bullet points. Why? What parent's going to pay you full price? You're not picking them up. You're not doing any of those things. Yet they've paid you that money. One is the loyalty factor. So we've been running camps and after school for a very long time. So these members, most of them, they're not just staying for a year of after school. We get to see their kids throughout from K all the way to fifth grade. And then they stay beyond with us for martial arts classes. So that really all of us are in a relationship, relationship building uh, profession, right? So they have a relational tie to us. I think that was one of the biggest things. The second thing is we provided options. We were the first ones to get options out to our members. Every All the other programs were still scrambling. And we said, okay, here, we got virtual classes. We're launching those. We're launching the private one-on-ones. So 
right away we went in, we gave them options to not outright cancel, but maybe to stay on or do a little bit of a reduction. We also let them know that when we are able to open for camps, they will receive our camps for free if it falls in the after school year. And I'm so thrilled that we get to open. We're opening on June 1st, which is Monday. And for those for these first two weeks that we're launching, we are providing free care to our after school members that have decided to stay on with us. I love and it. We built in a loyalty, we built in a code called loyalty. Mm-hmm. We sent it out and that just is another way for us to show appreciation. And those people, they will be getting a pretty sweet deal with us for the remainder of their membership, however long that is, uh, with Encourage and with Top Kick Broadlands, just because they stuck with us during these last three months. Yeah, we pivoted on that one too. And we got about 75% of our after schoolers to keep paying us. Uh, we chose not to add anything into that. We were still doing some Mandarin stuff. But what we told them straight up is you get martial arts for free until after school ends for the semester. And whatever you paid in after school, we're going to credit you in September. I mean, because what we chose to do, which was a little different, is we chose to shore up our existing members and stop the bleeding. That was the main thing. You know, we lost 200 students out of 1,000, which is a lot. Which, which is a lot, but that's only 20%. You said that the other day, hey, that's pretty good. It's only 20%. It seems to be the data across the board. But the thing you said that, that just hits home, it's the relationship. And if we're constantly investing in the relationship, instead of looking at them as simply a consumer, everything changes. And, and that's what we have found too. The most loyal um, of clients have stuck it out with us. And I think on our side, the deeper sense of gratitude, I mean, we, we're grateful for our students, but don't you feel at a heart level, we're even more grateful for the people that are sticking this out with us? Absolutely. Our students, our team members who are teaching 20 private one-on-ones, busting their butts. I mean, yes, this this has been, it, 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 in tough times, it truly shows who is with us in the trenches. It right, yeah. who we need to keep. Yeah. yeah, I've been working 17 hour days for months now, pivoting hard. You know, we're up to 100 private lessons a week, 40 group classes a week, and we're grateful that we have that dialed in. Now that we were just told we can't open until August 15th for classes at the earliest, at the earliest. So let's hop into camps. What's your strategy? What's your main strategy? Actually, let's start. I, I want to. So this has been what this is three months in right so the first thing we we always start from data at encourage so we are we are very data driven okay. where we pre- yes and you know we have to start reopening again that's the reality of it the longer we stay closed we're going to go out of business we're just going to continue bleeding every month um even though we have the virtual program the longer we have to do it. We're losing. We're losing students month over month, right? So we made the decision to open starting June 1st um, in Northern Virginia. We actually, today is the first day. We're going to open Monday before we or even open. Or classes? Both. So what we can do for, we fall in Northern Virginia, we fall under this exemption, the come and go policy, which allows us to open for camps in studio with very heavy restrictions. Gyms in Northern Virginia are also able to open, but only outdoors. So you can do a limit of 10 people outside, um, 10 feet apart, no shared equipment, all of that jazz. So we decided for this first week, we're going to open for for camps and we're only, we're limiting it to only our loyal members that continue to pay us, those after school members that I talked to you about, as a way for us to slowly open to make sure all safety protocols and guidelines are being followed. And how we did that was for the month of May. The first thing is we have to build trust with our, our members. People are not going to send their kids in. They're not going to come into our studios if they don't trust us that we're being safe, that we're being clean, that we're following all the guidelines, right? So this is a great picture. So um, if you haven't reopened yet, and if you're thinking of reopening, start now. Start by getting content out. If you have a private Facebook community page, yep. uh, through emails, get pictures of your team cleaning the facility. There's a get pictures of your team taping off the facilities to follow guidelines. So we have done this strategically since May. 
with all of our throughout all of our locations strategic emails showing what we're doing what cleaning products we have in place um how we're taping it off just all this all these things so that members by the time we open on monday are like oh wow they've been we've been seeing this 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 and it's not just like oh my gosh they're open now and i'm nervous they have seen us throughout the month building up to a reopen this is our message that we got out um with a lot of guidelines, it's just a little sample script of one of our messages. Brandon, if you have the picture of the studios, this is something that um, was a really big hit for our members is to actually see our physical studios taped off. So we just, what you see on the floor is painter's tape. Um, one of our partners went in, taped off, measured, and just to give a visual to members so they they can see okay this this makes sense oh this is this is what it's going to look like if my kids or when my kids go back in so you can physically run classes in your school as of june 1st no just camps so you said you're going to open for classes too on monday we're going to open up for classes the following week june 8th so we're going to do it in stages but our classes are going to be outdoors and very limited where are you going to do the classes outdoors each one of our uh, each one of our partners determines that, but my suggestion would be to do it somewhere in your as close to your facility as possible. So some of our schools have a huge parking lot and there's no no nobody using it. So we're gonna use the parking lot. Some schools have a green space that is perfect. So it really depends on the location. I feel you on that. Yeah, we just got the go ahead too. So we're already we just now got the go ahead that we're gonna be able to do exercise in the park. So that's something we're definitely gonna look at. You know, we're really, really going to look at that. Um, but I think camps, orienting people back into camps, you're so right, I mean, about this. I was speaking to a school owner that had about 20%, 30% of people came back the minute he shot a video of them cleaning and this is the intake process and all those different things, everything changed, everything changed. So we've already been shooting videos as well. Got it. And we're going to use the face shield because we want the kids to see our face smiling. You know, we shot videos of hand sanitizers, of the cleaning supplies. So I, I get you on that. That's very yeah. cool. Because and they're loyal to us and they trust us, but they don't trust the situation. And that's where we're trying to earn trust. And a couple of people felt a little bit slighted. I said, it's not that they don't trust you. They don't trust the uncertainty of this pandemic. So we need to do everything we can to assure them that we're following every guideline from the CDC and our local and state government to offer the safest environment possible, right? Right, and for us, it, it's an extremely tough decision. Every business owner, everybody who owns a business right now, we are in the worst situation. We don't know what's good. This We're still in a pandemic. So we have to either choose to one, go out of business if we don't open, or two, put our team at risk, right? Because once we choose to reopen our doors, we cannot guarantee 100% safety. We can put everything in place and to the best of our ability, put all safety measures, follow all guidelines, but with everything happening, it's, you can't say to your team, I will 100% guarantee your safety. Well, we see just with the CDC and the local government waiver, it states it really clear. And you better add that to your My Studio app, right. everybody. That waiver is like three pages long and it fundamentally says, your child's at risk. You can get COVID here. They make right. that clear as day. I just read that thing like three times going, oh my God. I mean, so it is, it is uncertain with that. So what else are we talking about in camps? I see we have a couple of slides there. I wanna make sure that we cover those for you. What am I missing? Here's one here. All right, so let's take a look at our camps. Um, we, the first thing is, so build that trust, build the, you have now, time to build that trust with your team members, start getting content out. Your team needs to be able to feel confident. Your members need to feel confident. The second thing is um, continue all your virtual programs. Yeah. Right now that's virtual is gonna be something that is just gonna be with us for the, the, for the time being. Don't cancel any virtual programs because members are not gonna, not all members are gonna be ready to come back into the studio. Yeah. So we kept everything that we launched like our 45 minute lessons for crafts and games, our private one-on-ones, our live group classes, those remain the same. We did not take away any of those classes. In addition to all of our virtual programs, we are adding very limited in-studio time slots. 
for us, uh, we're mandated that every room needs to have 10 or less people. That includes your staff. So what that means for us is we have we can have up to nine kids in a room with one team member. That's it. So that's how we're opening our camps. And for the next week, we're only allowing no more than nine kids to sign up for that first week. So then we can see really these safety guidelines and procedures that we have in place for our team. What does that really look like when we're executing it? Um, what Brandon is showing you, this is one of our summer camp weeks. So every every week we have a theme. So you can see this is art week. It's tie dye. This is kind of what we send out. This is what we send out to our members so they can get excited. The kids can get excited to see what we're doing in studio. We have this is the in studio plan that Brandon is showing. We also have a virtual tie dye plan where when they come into a virtual summer camp with us, it follows the same theme that our in studio is doing except they can do it all virtual. And then all of our mat chats, all of our activities flow into this theme. So this is what our team has been in overdrive because we've planned out about 10 weeks of, of themed summer camp weeks. So from a virtual program in studio and then an at home summer camp where parents can run it at home with their kids. Um, yeah. So that's What's virtual that's sign up like for kids? For what the what's the virtual sign up like they sign up through my studio i mean a lot of people signing up we launched this believe it or not we launched this yesterday so we are we got the go ahead we talked to our team we talked data on hey if we re do we reopen do we not reopen we so take that data first we let our team know hey we don't have if we choose as a team not to reopen for camps the reality is we're going to close three out of our five schools because we will need to refund about three hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of prepaid camps on top of that all the effects of not opening we'll probably lose close to eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars to a million dollars right because camp so is huge for you huge so at least in a lawsuit situation, if you're physically offering a camp and they choose not to come because of fear or COVID, you technically don't have to refund that money, correct? No, I believe for, for us, our cancellation policies, are, we have a 14 day cancellation and they can get a refund up to 14 days before the start of camp if they pre-bought. And we're gonna, about, we're gonna follow that because that's the, what we said to our members. The cool thing is we launched, um, so we launched in-studio camp times and we launched virtual. Yesterday was the first day we sold, we sold about $10,000 worth of camps and we only marketed it to the people that have already signed up for camps. dollars um, of in-house or virtual? In-studio. In-studio right. camps and then I think we sold a few virtual as well. But you want to give, the strategy, you want to give both options. If you're able to open uh, in your state for in-studio camps, now is a great time to, to do that. If you've never done camps, this is a great time because parents are going crazy. Their kids have been at home. But again, you need to set up all the safety protocols and follow all guidelines and make sure legally you are ready and to do that. Did you increase your prices for camp? We did, yes, because high demand, low supply. We That's went right. from being able to have a hundred kids in camp to 30. Now, what, what, one of the things with that also, are you going to do the three hour mods or just all day? I know we, have, we are doing two, two blocks. So an afternoon and uh, a morning and an afternoon block. Yeah. See, we, we weren't, we're not allowed to do that. These kids have to stay together all day. That, and they have to be here for a three-week cycle and in San Mateo, a four-week cycle. They can't co-mingle in other camps. They can't do it by the day. They can't do half days. They, it's literally becomes a second family for a three-week session or a four-week session. That makes a lot of sense if that's what is mandated for San mm -hmm. Francisco. Make well, I think what, what they said here is they want these kids to play together. They don't want them sitting there. I mean, we're going, okay, what can we do at six feet apart? This kid sitting in a six by six taped area for social distancing. Well, we could do battleship. We could do, you know, I mean, they don't really interact. I mean, the experience is horrible. So I think the mindset is if they're together for four weeks and somebody comes up positive, it can be traced. You would see symptoms in four weeks. 
right? Or three weeks. But I think the mindset they're, they're believing with that, and we're very conservative here in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. For a liberal state, it's so conservative when it comes to this, that that's the mindset. These kids are going to be able to play together. And so I, I feel because now that we can't open classes until August, we're looking at potentially the same thing. If we don't get things going class wise, then we may look at closing a location. You know, at some point we have to, any smart entrepreneur will look at every scenario, right? Just like the CDC looking at all of the different models that are out there, which way this pandemic's going to go. Any smart business is going to look at every scenario that possibly could happen, especially in these uncertain times, right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, there's already a lot of businesses that have closed their doors and we're going to start seeing a lot more. That's the reality of the situation we're facing. And we just have to be very smart about cash flow, but also about safety. So it's kind of, we have to take, consider both sides. And it's almost like picking the lesser of the two, the two evils, right? For yeah. us, our team feels very comfortable opening because we know unemployment is super high right now. If we close our schools, they might not be able to find a job. They And then if they do find a job, we are very confident that our safety protocols and procedures are gonna be way better than a grocery store that they oh, might yeah in where they're exposed to so many more people in that grocery store versus us we're only allowing for that full week only those nine kids and that teacher will be together there will be no intermingling because we don't want people to get exposed just like you said for exposure purposes right. limit how many points of contact your students have and your team members absolutely man so here's a question for the smaller schools, one to three people team, what if the school opens and the instructor gets a positive with COVID? Would this be a risk should stay virtual instead? Oh, is the risk, should they open their school or just stay virtual? We've already had two schools come up positive. I, I heard that from Beth Block, an insurance person. It's gonna happen, right? That's the risk you take again. Remember I said you can't guarantee 100% safety if you choose to open. That is the risk that you're you're gonna have to take. and Here's, here's what we did. We said, there's no team member that is forced to come back in. If they do not feel comfortable coming back in, they we're gonna have, and they're qualified, we're gonna have options of work from home because we still need people to run a virtual side, right? So just make sure that if you choose to open, your team knows that they, one, either have options or, or you have safety protocols in place. We have protocols and procedures in place every single day when our team comes in. Yep. They have to go through a safety check. There's certain things that they have to wear. There's certain th ways they have to behave and they're gonna all, um, we had a big meeting today. So we went over all of those things and just make sure your team feels safe going in. Hey man, here's a question. What are your activities looking like during camp, social distancing games, activities the whole time? or back to normal, dodgeball, et cetera? Definitely not back to normal. We are we have to pivot on everything. So um, one thing, we, we launched a program called Encourage Systems. You guys are more than welcome to go check it out, but we have made content and from flyers to operational content, to how you run games, to event marketing and pricing structure. So we built that all out and we have about, we have, um, our partners that are signed up for that and they get access to all of this. So if you take a look, Brandon is sharing on the screen, this is like a virtual parents night, night in that we've hosted this week. Actually it was hosted yesterday and it's being hosted today, but we have plans for that as well. So we make the flyers, we make the event sign up right into your My Studio account. And then you also get the, the plan. So I think I sent you the plans for this, sample plans for this. Brandon, if you wanna, is it this one? Yes. So then we, yes, it's that's a sample plan to show your team how to run a parent's night in. Pretty much what we're trying to do on our support end. So we have a support team of six people and we do all the back end because especially right now with COVID, our instructors and our partners are teaching classes back to back. They don't have time to build out content or say, oh, what are we gonna market next? What are we gonna do next? How? We, what, what's the price structure? So we come up with all of that so then they can just execute. That's, um, that's our whole kind of, that's why we're there. We support our instructors and our partners at the school. And I'd be happy to share if you want some of this content, just comment your email and I can send you some sample content 
uh, this this weekend so that you guys can use some of this stuff. This is like our in-school summer camp plan. So this is what they would be doing in studio. There's links to where you can get all of this. So you don't have to think about searching for it. You just click. It has directions for your team on how to execute all of that. Cool. 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 So uh, no more dodgeball, right? Uh, that was his question. Are you going to be able to play dodgeball? You know, dodgeball is a favorite and we definitely want to continue it. But how can you do that? You have to think, how can we do it? with social distance. They don't want kids to share equipment. Right. One thing that we're putting in is we have ordered a lot of outdoor materials and we have um, found outdoor space at every single one of our locations. And that we're gonna get the kids outside as much as possible. Yep. And we're getting quotes on the air purification system because that's something that's a good safety measure to put in, but also, a good marketing tool to get all your air ducts and everything. Um, so just start thinking ways to pivot. You cannot just come back in and open like a normal summer camp. They, yeah, have to Florida. they are in Florida. Yeah. I have clients in Florida and they're just, it's up to you. It's your discretion, what you think is safe. But we, you know, the governor there said they want kids to be kids. They want them to get back to normal. They want them to play. They want them to do whatever they think is 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 right so we actually did that we disinfected all our legos and then we created individual bags so that kid will only play with those set of legos during the week very smart yeah and so they're in a ziploc bag we got laundry baskets so when a kid comes in all his art supplies everything that he will use for that week or she will use for that week is all in a laundry basket nobody else will touch that we're asking for kid-friendly lunches. We will not open their water bottles, their thermoses, their lunches. It has to be a kid-friendly lunch that they can negotiate. So I feel you. I feel you. You know, but you're right. If we don't get open in somehow some sort and start rebuilding that trust that we can offer a safe environment, then what's going to happen down the road? You're, you're absolutely right. Start there. Um, I would lay out. Uh, we we spent weeks just reading guidelines and the guidelines are changing from day to day from all of our officials. So it's going to be very important for all of us to stay up to date, phase one, phase two, phase three, what's the updates, what's coming out um, so that we can be the first and our, our members can see, Hey, we're, we're very serious about this. We're very serious about providing you the care that you need, but keeping safety first in our minds. And I think that's the reason why we got so many signups yesterday and we're continuing to get signups today is just that trust that our members have in us um, from the content that we're putting out, how we're running our virtual programs, how we operated before COVID hit, all of that leads to this decision if they trust us to come in to care for their most precious, which is their child. Absolutely. Um, we have a bunch of people posting their emails. Is that so you can get to them or, or, or do you want to just put in, put your email in there where they can find you, men? Yeah. Thank you for posting your emails. I think I told you to do that. I don't know, Brandon, I'm sorry if that wasn't okay to do. No, or it's totally okay, but. Message me, message me and I'll get you access to some, some free content and then Ooh. just a little bit more advice on how to slowly reopen your schools. Yeah. And so we're all pivoting hard. And I think, you know, one of the things Amazon, who I study their data a lot, they're big on speed, you know, but I know it's important that we do this, but please do it carefully. Think it out. Think it out. I mean, I've been strategizing on this for months and visualizing what this is going to look like. And so as now that we're now looking at physically opening camps and with the conditions, you know, I'm next thing I'm going to do is a Zoom parent meeting. We're going to have that discussion because our mayor here said we're going to keep them in pods of 12 for three weeks in San Francisco. That's so they can play together. Well, define that. What does that mean? Play together, right? Are they going to be able to reach into the same Lego box and play with Legos together? I mean, what does that mean, right? How hard is it to ask a kid to stay six feet away from another kid all day long? How hard is it to make them wear a mask all day long, right? So here they said, well, you know, we recommend masks, but masks are optional. Do we yeah. err on the side of caution and make everybody wear a mask, you know, or do we leave that up to the parent, right? Do we supply the mask or does the parent supply the mask? So we reduce the risk of, you know, cross-contamination. 
right? So for us, that's the same thing. Actually, kids are not required to wear masks. Um, I think the new new thing that just came out is anyone 10 or over. Um, so any child that's 10 years old or above would be required. But what's, we can't physically force a child that's 10 or up, if they want to take their mask off, we can't tape it to their face, right? So it has to be, I would recommend putting something in your waiver disclaimer saying that if there's any conduct, conduct from the member that puts your other campers or a team at risk, you have the right to dismiss them from camp. Right. Um, there's a lot of gray area, which is very frustrating. Okay. <laughs> very, a lot of gray area. And that's when we come in as business owners to have and take all the data and try to um, come up with the best, best. No. Way. I feel you, man. I feel your frustration, man. I feel that and, and we're all working hard because we are don't think big or small. We're all at risk of losing our businesses or at least a portion of it. Right. And, and I know people like to say, Oh, we're not all in the same boat. We're in the same ocean, but we're not in the same boat. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. We're all dealing with the fear and the uncertainty. We're all dealing with these different challenges as you can hear and see. Um, I wish I was in Florida though, right now where people are just wide open. I mean, they're open, you know, and, and that's a trip. Cause that would not happen here. They would fine us 400 bucks if you're walking around without a mask. I mean, it's a much different state. Yeah, we, we, our state follows along what you're going on, especially Northern Virginia, all of Virginia opened up except for Northern Virginia, because we just have much higher cases and we're still close to Washington DC. There's so many more people in the Northern part of our state, yep. but we got delayed another two weeks while the rest of the state opened. Um, but with that, we can only do what we can do. So I would say, let's focus on what we are in control of. Yep. Let's start getting safety procedures in place. How do we get our team comfortable? Let's start talking to our team, see if they're ready to get in. Um, if not, we're going to have to pivot. There's a lot of people that need jobs now. So this is a great time to find some really good talent. Um, this is a great, great time, right? To provide jobs and find good talent. So focus on the things that you can control and the things that you can put in place. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you better work on controlling Miss Thang too. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know if I can control her. See, that's why I just, I need to let it go. Todd, anybody know how to control toddlers? <laughs> no way. She's so much different than, than Ty and Austin. She's so yeah. much different, man. She's a firecracker and uh, my husband likes to say she's, she's me. So I'm like, Oh no. <laughs> you know, think of everything you pulled on your mom in the teen years. Look forward to that. Cause if she's like, she's going to be pulling stuff in her teen years, you'll be like, Oh man. Yeah. Okay. So I, 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 I don't want to keep you, man. I know you got to go. It's already 1143. Um, I, 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 what, what do you want to tell people? What do you want to give them? What, what can you inspire them with as they walk out of this? I think the biggest thing is stay positive and stay healthy, right? Every one of us here watching, I hope is healthy. That is the number one thing. Uh, stay healthy, keep your team healthy, keep them safe as best as you can. There are always things that we can do. Uh, there's different, we, we just have to keep pivoting, keep innovating. We never thought we'd be here, not even four, three months ago, we were fine. And look at where we are as an industry. We've all launched. We're still in business. We're still kicking. I think um, what you said, Brandon, is very true. Is It's we, right? We are together in this for one another, to help each other. We're there for each other. So uh, reach out to me. I know Brandon's a huge help to everybody. But keep fighting, keep focused, and keep positive, and stay cool. healthy. Hey, Miss Min, so where can they find you? You said message you. Message you at Facebook. Is there a website they can go to? Yeah, you guys can go to encouragesystems.com, I-N, courage, systems.com to get some more information. Um, you can also, from that website, book a call with me. So if you guys have any questions on the type of stuff we provide or just want to talk for 15 minutes, go ahead and hit that link and I'll be happy to um, schedule, a call, schedule a call with me and I'd love to talk to you more. But Or you can message me on Facebook uh, at my at Min Wilson and I can get you give me your email address and I can provide just a week of free content for you to hopefully get you give you some ideas and some different ways. Cool. I love you, Min. Best, love you, man. 
best to the kids and you you know, know, stay strong. Him. Tell your other half I miss her a oh, lot. Yeah, we're, we're worrying. Now my son's graduating from elementary school, so we're you know, looking at that surreal experience. And so we're working on that. I remember coming to San Fran yeah. and visiting you and Brayden was a baby. Like you yeah. just had him. Yeah. It's like so fast. Yeah. I, I remember when you were just a baby. Now you don't feel <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, right I'm, still, I'm still only 22. So it's yeah. you know, still a baby. <laughs> All right. I love you. Thank you so much for being here. Bye guys. Bye-bye. So let's embrace that, you know, um, they're very high-end operators. And what I love is data. You know me, I'm a big data guy. And they taught me that. I mean, I, I, I don't own that. I learned that from John Cassidy, who's a brilliant man. I learned that from two. I learned that from men. Data is something we go off of because data isn't governed by emotion. Data is just facts, right? You analyze this data that comes in. And if you think of the companies that are extremely successful right now, Facebook, Google, Twitter, right? They're all data miners. They have our data. If you want to know everything about Brandon Beliso, go to Facebook so they can take that data and people pay a lot of money for that data. And so be a miner of data. I'm not saying that we need to be at that level of Facebook, but if you can just simply mine data, you can make so much better business decisions in everything that you do in your business. That's the long and short of it. And once I began analyzing data, it helped me make better choices, right? Someone said, always analyze your data for retention and my retention and my attrition rate. I look at that. I really do. But it helps me make better decisions. It does. Because I think that's the big challenge with data is people look at it and go, well, what do I do with it now? Make a choice, pivot, right? If the data shows you all your beginners are leaving in week one, I'd go look at the guy doing the intros, right? I'd go look at the classes they're attending. I'd look at what's taught to them in those classes. Is there the Disney experience? So there's something you can do with the data. It doesn't mean, oh, you know, beginners are, are, are leaving after a week. Let's run more Facebook ads. I don't believe that's a solution. The solution is to look at that data and see how you can pivot. And, and like Miss Min said, that was so powerful that I hear all the time is that you can only take action on what you're in control of. I know we're left to so many variables in this pandemic and the person's ability to control their emotion, to control themselves, to, to put their nose to the grindstone and really work on the things that are within your control. Number one, it empowers you. It empowers you. And number two, if and when things open, you are in the best position to reap the benefits. You feel me? So really think about that, right? Really, really think about that. All right, so what questions do you have? I want you to start putting them in. And while you do that, I'm gonna share some of the things. We are inquired to Georgia to make him wear a mask. Awesome, Sarah. I want you to consider something. Um, hang on, I'm gonna grab something. Put in those questions. I want you guys to see this. All right, so this is what we're going to wear. And I dig for that. What do you think about it? Yep, because I want the kids to see our faces. I want them to see us smiling. And now we're looking for a version of this for kids. And because they're going to be outdoors so much, there's a great one that I've seen coming out. Kind of looks like a fisherman's hat with this mask on it. And I think it's easy for kids. You know, because there's no obstruction with the face. Um, so I think it works really, really well. So do look at this. These are called face shields. Right now they're in abundance. But what's going to happen is schools start pivoting and recognizing that you can't make a kid wear a mask all day long. This is a great alternative. A great alternative, a great alternative. Now, sure, masks are optional and it's up to the parents whether the kid wants to wear it or not. But here's my feeling about that. Say the parent says, I don't want my kid to wear the mask. And then this kid comes up you know, positive. That's not a good day for your business. So I believe to err on the side of caution and make sure you're doing everything you can. You can, right? You can. All right, cool. Where did you get this? This one I got, um, I think these we got at eBay, but you'll find them at Amazon. 
just be careful because some people are gouging in prices and there's other people that are selling it really well for good price. And so I think if you buy more of them by the dozen, whatever, it, it makes a huge difference. K1, yes, these are going to go fast, I believe. Yep. And be, if you look at it, I did a couple of, I did some research and this is just as effective as a face mask. It really is. Sure, the first responders are wearing both, wearing both, but I breathe these in this, but the main thing was, you know, I want those kids to walk through the door and be able to see our smile. I really felt that as I walk around the street and I see, you know, I wear a face mask, nobody sees my face. So nobody can tell if we're smiling at each other and a smile means so much right now. So when those campers come, you go, hey, what's happening? And they can see your big smiling face. Um, it's really important, right? Oh yeah, Century is offering a clear face shield. Have to call order 10 masks for 9.99, there you go. Century's got a version of this as well. Why not support Century? I say so. And that's a good price. 10 of these, 10 of these for 9.99, that's a really good price. That's a really, really good price. That's a really good price. So do think about that, okay? So other than the things that we're doing, we've made a bunch of videos ourselves and Jim and Connie, who's, who's one of my clients in my group mentoring program, they are here. They said, you know, the minute they went back and made a video showing how we're intaking people and cleaning stuff, the, I think it was 18% that said, ah, uh, we're not gonna come back yet. Half of them came back to classes because where Jim and Connie are at, they're allowed to do classes. So they came back to class once they saw the safety procedures in place. And, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold a Zoom conference for all my parents to ask their questions and, and to talk about it and treat it like a democracy. You know, I would prefer kids wear masks. These are the alternatives. How do you feel about that? Right. Here's the, the you know kid-friendly lunches, we will not touch their lunches, et cetera. How do you feel about it? They want them in pods for three weeks. But what they're saying by being, having them in a pod to let these kids play together. How many of you are okay with your kids playing together, right? Sharing games, sharing balls. They're just saying if they're in this pod for three weeks or like in Millbrae, four weeks, that whatever they're sharing together, they don't share with any other group. And at the end of that week, we disinfect everything. So, you, you know, what does that look like? What does that look like, right? And we're pivoting hard too, because we wanna be able to get open. And if camps are the first way we can earn that safety back, you know, earn that trust back in relationship to safety, that's really it, because people love you. Your clients love you. It's got nothing to do with you. It has to do with circumstance. So like Miss Min is saying, put those videos together, start dripping them out as soon as you can and sharing those with your clients, cool? Um, Danny, when is it time to open up? Can we run two groups, one in the dojo and one outside? I think you can, Danny. I saw that question in a minute ago. You absolutely can. What I would question is how do you facilitate that, right? Where do they check in? Because when they come into our school, the first thing they're going to do inside is either take off their shoes and wear socks only, or we disinfect the bottoms of their shoes, right? Then they're going to wash their hands, not just simply use a hand sanitizer. And then once that's done, you know, all their stuff goes into that laundry basket. And then it's going to be in an area that's only for them. They negotiate. We don't touch their backpacks. We don't touch anything, anything, anything. Okay. So if you're doing a group outside, how do you intake them? Think about that for a moment. Like we're allowed to do groups of 12 plus two counselors. That's what they want. And you're even allowed to volunteer. So we're good with that. The big thing is um, in San Francisco, we actually have two separate doors. One can go upstairs, one is downstairs. Upstairs, there's two bathrooms. Downstairs, there's two bathrooms. We don't want them even mixing bathrooms because then you're cross-contaminating. The games upstairs will be the same as the games downstairs. Nobody's games will ever cross. Staff will not cross. That's the other thing they want. In that three-week period, they want the same staffing that's there. They don't want kids coming one day here, then one day at another camp, a different camp. They want none of that. So I get the philosophy and the strategy. If they're in a group for three weeks together, somebody will show symptoms. That's it. So that's what we're given in San Francisco. We're going to verify that even more. I want to know because of that pod, you want kids to play together. Sure. Our mayor said off the cuff, we want kids to play basketball together and things like that. But what are the actual guidelines for that now? Right? So we're going to gather that and see how that looks. Next question.
Hmm. I don't see other, any other questions. How are we doing on time? Good, 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 good. We have about five minutes. Um, I think a positive mindset has been everything for us. When we got the news yesterday that we physically can't open our school for classes until mid-August because we are classified as a gym, the first thing I did was pivot, right? We're already running Facebook ads heavy to get new virtual students because that is what we are given. And so we're working hard right now. We have tons of Facebook ads running. Facebook is cheap for ad placement right now because of the situation people aren't spending a lot of money on their ad spends so we're going after that virtual market hard and we're going to address camps those are the things we're going to do but i think the big thing danny i want you to be mindful of is just don't create a situation that is unsafe i i do admire men and the gang at encourage because they have a pretty big space and the fact they're only going to allow eight kids in the first week to really test their systems in, in, in live action, right? Test them and see if they really work. I think that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. What are the activities and your games looking like? Like I said, Jim, you know, again, we're going to dig a little deeper into what's being asked by our mayor here. But if I can let kids play together, that's going to be a huge factor. I really do. And of course we want the parents okay. And we'll say, Hey, this, these are the conditions. But like I said, we already sanitized Legos. They're in individual bags for kids to play by themselves. But you know, that's not the best experience. We have games like battleship, right? Cause one kid could be over here. The other kid can be six feet away and play battleship. We thought about connect four two connect fours, right? And then if I put one here, you have to replicate what I did on your side. So that way, our two connect fours mirror each other. So it's about being creative, right? What if we each had a game of, of checkers? And when I moved my piece, you move the equivalent of my piece on your board. We can do that too. So there's a lot of variables. Of course, Simon Says is big. Freeze Dance is big. You know, we're trying to come up with some kind of pseudo dodgeball that would actually work. Let's say everybody's sitting in there six feet of social distancing. One kid comes up. We throw the ball at them. 10 times. And then if they get hit, you know, that's one mark against them. If they catch one, a mark gets taken away. And then after that, that ball goes to the side and someone sanitizes the tar out of that ball. And we have another ball and the next kid comes up because what are the elements of dodgeball that they really love? They love ducking and dodging and getting out of the way. So there's that as well. Um, but it is about being creative with the new norm and doing everything you can to earn your family's trust that this environment is safe. That's it. You know, there's two schools. I saw Beth Block founded already. They came up positive. A mom was positive and she told them and she doesn't want her kids to get tested. What do you do? Well, number one, you tell everybody. That's the responsible freaking thing to do. And this mom wasn't in the school because they're not allowing anybody in, but the kids were in the school. So what do you do? You do what you're supposed to do. Oh, it's gonna close me down. Yes, it is. And then you do a deep cleaning and you open right back up, right? And the kids who were there, if it's a 14 day quarantine, then they have to stay home. I mean, that's the risk we are taking. And it's a huge risk considering the situation we're in. But like Min said, and I agree, it is the lesser of two evils. And, and that sucks, but it's what we've been given. So what are we gonna do? So we probably, well, we can't, but we're going to ride hard on the virtual. We're going to amplify it. We're going after a new audience to try to shore up some income for the summer. Will we look at virtual camp? Absolutely. Absolutely. We're looking at everything to generate revenue, right? So that we are here when this pandemic is over. Cool. Do you mind sharing your ads, my Facebook ads? No. I mean, they're, they're, they're all over. They're all over. And, um, I'll give you results. I want to hold off. You know, we're working with a new company and, and before I endorse them or anything of that nature, uh, let me play this out for a couple of weeks. Let me play it out and see how the relationship goes, see what goes on. And then I'll happily share it. Cause you know me, I am an influencer. And if I find somebody that I believe in, we share values the same and they genuinely care and look out for the betterment of our industry. I'm all over it. They, yeah, they should make money. And that's why I love my studio. 
you know, with what they're doing. Everything is innovation. Everything's about the customer experience and they're looking out for us. The new scheduler to allow people to schedule their classes conveniently, right? Under these circumstances is powerful. Market muscles with what Steven did with his websites to help pivot in the virtual environment with scheduling and Zoom and all that. You, you just, there's no, there's, there's no way to touch that. And I'm, I'm an influencer for them. And that's, that's a reality. I was referring Steven before I ever knew him. And I don't even have a Market Muscles website because I have my own web designer. But if I didn't have my own personal websites, I would be. I still refer Stephen all the time, every day. I'm doing it right now, right? And, and so that, that's, that's what I'm about. So let me take a look at these guys that I'm working with, with these Facebook ads and stuff. And I, if I think they're, they're, they're legit, I'll, I'll happily share it. Absolutely. Well. Cool. Any other questions? So did you share this with everybody? Because we're giving away an hour of consultation with me. One hour. And I know for a fact, you can talk to people that are on this, this broadcast today. I have helped save schools and they are still open and they are still running because we've pivoted hard together and I've taken care of my clients. I have, and they're still open. They're still running. Um, what do I got coming up tomorrow? 820 AM Pacific standard time. I'm on the Taekwondo worldwide virtual summit. After the opening ceremonies, I'm kicking off the show tomorrow. I'm going to be talking about how the pandemic has changed consumers buying habits and how we as martial arts school owners can capitalize on that and utilize it. Because unfortunately, through times like this, somebody's going to prosper. I read the other day, the billionaires in the world collectively have increased their wealth by $434 billion over the past three months. How is that? If you look at the stocks, right? Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft, Apple, you know, they've been at their all time highs over the past couple of weeks. How is that? Because there are opportunities here. There are opportunities. And once we focus on these opportunities, we allow ourselves a brave new world that we can walk into and not only survive, but thrive and be profitable. You know, what's huge right now, private lessons. Right now, every time we get a victory, we call them victories. We, we celebrate. We just had another student book 30 private lessons. Maybe they saw the news. Bam, we're here until August 15th. No gyms. So my private lessons are up. All my guys, our private lessons are up. We do give the 15 minute free virtual private lesson to anybody that's having challenges in class that wants to get ahead. But we do also offer 30 minute paid private lessons and those are taking off. We build out close to ooh, now, I'd say close to 10 grand, close to 10 grand in private lessons in the past two months. And that's easy. Cool. Everybody shared. All right. Any other questions that, that, that you want to ask me before we wrap up today's broadcast? We good? We good? All right. Hey, so let's do this. K1, give me a little bit of drum roll. Drum roll, please. Who is the winner? of today's one hour of consultation with me. Who's the winner, K1? Ivan, ooh, that's a new name, Ouellette, Ouellette. I can't pronounce your last name, sir. Everybody, give Ivan some love, disruptors. Give Ivan some love, okay? Give Ivan some love, folks. Give him some love, give him some love, give him some love. Hey, so you know one thing I got coming up? It's a paid event. We're going to have a rotating curriculum next Saturday. K1 will post that. It's going to be a three-hour workshop, and we're limiting it to a number of instructors. I want to get rotating curriculum dialed in. I'm going to facilitate it live at Zoom. We're going to go over slides together, and we're going to help you dial in your, your curriculum, and we're going to write out one mod collectively in a collective, one mod, one three-month cycle to help you start scripting that out, mapping that out. You're the architect. So that's going to happen next Saturday. K1, I don't know if we have a time for that. Do you have that? I think it's 1 to 4 p.m. next Saturday. What day is that next Saturday? Anybody? Thank you for all the congratulations to Ivan. Good, good, good. Oh, and Jason's going to be on Kids Love Life Skills, uh, the page soon. Reopening interview with Jason. Jason's in Florida. They've already reopened. So Jason's one of my clients. He's a good soul. We've done everything with his school and he's actually moving to another location and it's happening. There's an example of pivoting hard through this crisis and thriving. So he's moving his school. He's moving to a better location. 
And so the rotating curriculum event is Saturday, 1 to 4. We'll post that link. It's limited June 5th from 1 to 4 p.m. Very limited space. Very limited space. So you want to get signed up for that. Make that time. Block it out. The curriculum is the food in the restaurant. I look at right now as a rebuilding phase. We are rebuilding. Make no doubt about it. Scheduling, we can do whatever we want. We want to change our curriculum. We can do that too because now we're in that position. So all these other things you could never do because you were simply running, running, running your business. Now that we're shut down pretty much, we have a unique opportunity to build a business for the brave new world, to build a business for the new norm. Because if you think things are going to go back to normal, that's crazy. There will never be normal. There will be a new normal, right? That we'll all adapt to, but make no mistake. It'll never go back to the way it was. It will be a different, different way of living life. Cool? All right. I want to thank my sponsors, my studio. Love you guys. Market muscles. Nothing but love. Kids love life skills. And we got big things coming out of Kids Love Life Skills. You just wait and see. This is one of those great opportunities. And we've really been working on that. And then, of course, LC Accounting. Cool, cool, cool. Hey, folks, I am Brandon Beliso. This is Success Never Sleeps. Until we talk again, stay home, open your school, get ready for camp, do what you got to do. But what are we going to do? Live our best life.